Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. What a privilege it is to serve God. Aren't you glad that you're in the church? It's the safest place in the world. We know who we are, we know where we've been and where we're going, and we know who we serve. <laughs> There's just one God, and his name is Jesus. I'm not ashamed of this name, and I'm not ashamed of the Holy Ghost. I thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost. <coughs> there ain't nothing like the power of God when it moves through the mortal body of man. If you want to hide, just get full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> There ain't no drugs like it. There ain't no kind of liquid like it. There's no kind of alcohol like it. When you have the power of God, you have something that you're going to take you out of here one day. Thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost. For that same spirit that lifted Jesus Christ is going to lift us out of here one day. Ew, I'm looking forward to that great and notable day when our Lord shall come. What a day that'll be when my Jesus I will see. I think I just long to look upon his face. One that saved me by his grace. You can be seated. Yeah, he's been a good God. I'm right where I want to be tonight, in the house of God. I told my wife this morning, I said, before I left, I hope I die preaching. I hope I'm at top of my anointing one time and just shoot right out there on the floor and die dead as a doornail. I'm on my way to heaven. Well, we need to get heavenly minded. We're going somewhere. Yeah, we're on a journey. <laughs> Heaven looks better all the time. Yeah. And you know, I'd like to go on to heaven if it wasn't for doing the work of God and staying around maybe to take care of my folks for a little while think of heaven a lot beautiful place and just think you and I get to go there you know we don't have a choice of coming in this world and we don't have a choice of going out but we do have a choice of how we're going out of here <laughs> yeah we're the most privileged people on earth. We've been blessed. Well, I'm going to preach here in a minute. I'll just kind of... Let's stand and read out of Revelations. The third chapter, I'm going to read out the 14th verse of the third chapter of Revelations. Thank you, Brother Pace, for the invitation. You've always shown me great hospitality. I appreciate it. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write these things, saith the Amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works that art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, and poor, blind, and naked, Counsel, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, 
that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy neckness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eyesight, that thou mayest see. My thoughts going to be tonight, from nobility to nakedness, would you pray, brother? You can be seated. There was a time when men began to multiply upon the earth. And the sons of God saw that the women were fair and they began to marry into them. Now there's a teaching going on that that was angels, but that was not. The sons of God were always men. I never read where angels were the son of God. So he says, we're the sons of God, led by the Spirit of God. He gave us power to become the sons of God. And uh, that's false doctrine. But the righteous was married into the wicked. And they had children, and their sons become renowned. and They become uh, uh, older, older people. And uh, as they begin to intermarry here and uh, produce children, and they become wicked, and their minds were on evil continually. And it got so bad that God decided he would destroy man from off the face of the earth. And I've never seen a more wicked time than we are today. I don't know how God uh, keeps from not, how, keeps from God, don't know how God keeps from judging this world with all of the filth and all of the evil stuff that comes out of the media and everywhere else you everywhere you look there's nothing but uh, evil and uh, you know they try to dress in the world as most sensual as they can they got these old tight pants now they don't wear no underwear on them and uh, they look awful and uh, I know how a lot felt vexes me to watch all this go going on you know they ain't got no decency People don't dress up anymore. People don't care what they look like anymore. You'd be surprised at uh, what uh, people that's got anything on the ball. Uh, you know, I'm an old man, wore out, wrinkled, and put out. But when I go into the airport, the, stu the airline stir, so you sure look nice today. And, uh, you know, they make comments on it because they don't see nobody uh, in the airport with any uh, suit on or uh, decent clothes they come in their pajamas and everything else but uh, we we know how to dress and uh, we dress the best and God gave us the best dress you know we, we're not freaks we know how uh, to cover our body and we know how to conduct ourselves as men and women you know you take a lawyer he's going to take some that's been in trouble with the law you're going to make him get a good shave and get on a good suit and shine his shoes and uh, his right. white shirt on and a tie because he's going to impress that judge right. so you see the executives and the banks they don't wear muscle shirts and tennis shoes they have on good suits you know so we're right in line you know I mean they, they can learn a lot from us if they just come around and, and, and take a good look at how Pentecostals live and I'm going to tell you something. You're exceptional in Pentecost here in this church. You look good. You worship good. In places I go, they bust the walls out, knock the windows out. And they think they've had church, come out bleeding and everything else. Well, I'm here to tell you God don't uh, not cut us in the head and he don't uh, run us through walls and we don't go through windows. I'll tell you, when you get in the spirit, it's a decent when God moves on you, everybody feels something. 
It ain't four or five acrobats in the group. But God moves on the body, we all feel it. We may not all shout, but we feel something. Because we're all in the same church. Aren't you glad to be in the church of the living God? But it repented the Lord that he ever made man. And he said, I'm just sick of it. Fixing to destroy all man, beast, fowl, everything. The breeze, I'm fixing to destroy. But there's one by the name of Noah that found grace in the eyes of the Lord. One man changed God's mind. Just think what good one sincere prayer can do with God. Here's one man never had a preacher, never had a Bible, but he was perfect in his day. He walked with God, and God saw him and changed his mind. I'm going to give you a plan, Noah, where you can save you and your family. And God gave us a plan where we could save ourselves and our family. God gave him a divine plan how to build that ark, and God gave us a divine plan how to work on this building that we're working on. You know, it says in uh, Isaiah, the 66th chapter in the first verse, the heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool, but where is the house you're building for me? You're working on a building. You're getting it ready, and the way you get it ready is whether it's going to leave here or not. If it's going to be heaven bound, it's going to be built according to the master. It's going to be built according to his plan. It's going to be repentance, water baptism, and the Holy Ghost. Not going to be just any old way. You know, there's too many people today, they got these crazy ideas and they think God's following them. I don't understand that because it said this, that we follow God. And they think because they thought of something that it's godly. No, if it ain't according to this word, it ain't of God. I'm not looking for new paths. I'm trying to get in them old ones. For, the, uh, for it says it is, Jeremiah says it is a good way. They that walk therein. This here is a good way. I'm not ashamed of holiness. I'm not ashamed of the Holy Ghost. You know, a lot of these churches, they call it Holy Spirit. Or I've been spirit filled. Yeah, but I wonder what spirit they got filled with. I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The same thing that Paul had and the same thing that Peter had and the same thing that Jesus' mother got. That's what I got. For he said, I must go away that the comforter might come and a ghost is of a deceased. Thank God he went to Calvary and died that you and I might have him inside of us today through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And old things pass away and all things become new. Aren't you glad you're a child of God? You have the mind of Christ, your hope and glory. You're not just down here bouncing around and don't know where to go and what to do you got some uh, somebody something in you that leads and guides you and something that's in you that lets you know don't do this don't do that you got to be sensitive and listen to the Holy Ghost it'll direct your paths and help you along life's journey be seated Yeah, you know, we got to work our salvation out ourselves. Right. Nobody going to work it for you. Right. Right. Got to get it for yourself. That's right. Amen. Some people think, well, God's going to come along and sweep me off the pew. No, he's not either. God don't make nobody serve him. Right. Right. It's whosoever will. That's right. If you don't want him, he don't want you. Tell you if you if you walked inside of a one God tongue talking church one time and walk out, 
you have missed the greatest thing that you ever come to contact in your life. Amen. The world ain't done nothing to you but give you heartaches and disappointments. But what does God give? What all he give you sitting out there? What all he give me? I was telling Brother Pace coming over here, there's a preacher that went and told me one day, he said, Brother Moody, said, uh, I can get you in business where you can make a lot of money. I said, I don't want no money. You don't owe no money. No, I got all I want. You ain't rich, are you? No, I ain't rich. I just don't want no more money. What would you do with it? I said, ask him, what are you going to do with it if you make more money than what I need? Got a car to drive, house to live in, clothes to wear, <coughs> food to eat, go anywhere I want to. So what's, that, what's all this other money for? I'll tell you what, I'm a millionaire because I know who made the cattle of a thousand hills and who made all the gold and silver under it. <coughs> I'm not selling my soul to a dollar. I gave mine to Jesus Christ one time at an old-fashioned altar. I got the pearl of great price. I got something the politicians can't get and money can't buy. But all I had to do is give him a down payment of my sins and here I am tonight after 45 years. He picked me up when I was down, made something out of me when I was nothing, took my sins and washed them away and put them on the blood, don't remember them anymore. I'm glad to be a child of the king. You're a millionaire if you know him. Huh? If he's for you, who can be against you? <laughs> but he told Noel how to build that ark. And he had to do it by faith. And I believe he had to do it day by day. And we've got to do it day by day. Amen. That's right. day, by day. So he had to get his instructions from God each day of what he was going to do. He told him to make an ark. Make it out of gopher wood. He couldn't go down and get some plywood or whatever other kind of wood. He said gopher wood. When he told us to repent, he means repent. That means turn away from what you're doing and quit doing it. I want you to make it 300 cubics long, 50 cubics wide, and 30 cubics tall. He said, I want you to put a door in the side. Ain't but one way in. There wasn't but one ark, one God, one door. I want lower, second and third. Death, burial, and resurrection. Repentance, water, baptism, and the Holy Ghost. I want it pitched within, pitched without. Hold it its own inside, hold it its own outside. I was a type, wasn't it? He had to build it according to the way he wanted it, not the way Noah wanted it. It didn't matter how, what all was happening around him. A hundred years, I believe it was, he worked on the ark, preached all the time, didn't get no converts, but he just kept on working. Amen. Kept on the building. Amen. And you know, we, we, we're going to keep working, we're going to keep building, and God's going to give the increase. I like what this uh, brother uh, Pace here said tonight, you know, when he made the statement uh, that uh, huh, the thought left me. Now, I'll tell you all something ahead of time so you'll know. I got chemo brain. You go blank. So if I go blank, just let me wall around a little bit. I'll... Like an old hound dog, I'll pick up a trail in a minute. Yeah. Used to be embarrassing, but I've got so old now, it don't bother me. 
my doctor told me, I said, how long I have this chemo brain? She said, 10 years. I said, I don't even know when I died then, doctor. What am I going to do? So, <laughs> yeah, he made a comment there a while ago. But anyway, I'll think of it in a minute. If I don't, I'll get him to tell me. After service, I'll mention it tomorrow night. <laughs> you know, when you get old like I am, you got false teeth, false eyes, false ears, and about everything else is false, you know. <laughs> so you, it's one advantage of being old is that, well, he's old, you know, senile, you know, pay no attention to him. But y'all ain't that way. Y'all going to listen to me, aren't you? Told him how to build that ark. God told us how to get this house ready that we're building unto him. That's what it says in Isaiah the 66th chapter. Where's the house you building me? I'm working on a building. I'm getting me a house ready because one day it's going to be changed, but I'm going to leave here in a new body. But I've got to get qualified for that new body. Have you ever just thought about what it's going to be like to never die? Time no more. Don't hurt no more. Don't worry no more. Don't have to sleep. It's no night. No sun, moon. He's the light. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what a place that's going to be. We ought to get excited about where we're going. We ought to get excited about we got a chance at heaven. Not everybody has this opportunity. But God handpicked you somewhere in your neighborhood and brought you into this church. You didn't come in on your own, for no man cometh to God except his spirit draws him. You ought to thank God that God touched you one day and brought you into the church. You may be the only one in your family that's in the church, but God chose you, and God expected you to make it, or he would have never chose you. We didn't get in this looking back. We got in this looking forward. We didn't get in this thinking we couldn't make it. We got faith we're going to make it. I'm not interested in where I've been. I'm interested in where I'm going. You know, I can't understand anyone that's ever had this heavenly gift and then turn around and walk back out to that beggarly elements of that world and all that puke that's out there and turn this great thing down right here. You know, I had times whenever I called on him and he is there. I won't always be here whenever he calls on me. I owe a debt that I can't pay. I was the chiefest among sinners. I'm like Paul, but he picked me up out of that sin. All that devil had invested in me and one touch of the master's hand took it all away. Made me a new creature in Christ. Didn't go where I used to go and didn't do the things I used to do. I remember when I first went to church the first time, I was driving down uh, out in the country to the church, going along with my family. I thought, man, I'm going to church. I felt like a man for the first time in my life. I was 35 years old. I wasn't headed to the bar. I was headed to the church. I thought, man, I'm going to church. And never did quit going to church, but I did quit the bars. <laughs> I didn't feel like no man until I found who Jesus was. Then I felt like a man. It takes a man or a woman to live for God in this world. They may look down their nose at you and say, well, you go to that church, you can't do this, can't do that. You can do anything you want to. You just chose how you want to live. They can't do anything they want to. They've got to obey that devil that, they, that runs their life out there. They got to smoke their cigarettes. They got to take their dope. They got to take their drugs in order to be happy. But not you and I. All we got to do is come to the house of God, raise our hands and begin to worship our God. Yeah. 
They can't tell me about their world. I've been in both of them and there ain't nothing like this one. I can lay down at night and say my prayers and go off to sleep and I ain't worried about going to hell. And then I was running them bars and all that. Every night I went to bed, I got uh, near the ninth old man. If I could wake up in the morning, I might be in hell. I threw one night, I had a dream and I was looking at a wall, a building about as long as this, but it had the end out and had some more doors on down here. And I was standing there looking at that wall and directly I heard the most beautiful music I ever heard in my life. It was so beautiful. Tears were streaming down my cheeks. It just so smooth. I sat there and I listened and my dream ended. God spoke to me later and he said, I'll let you have just a little touch of what heaven's like. Right. I'm going to tell you what, you ain't never heard no music like that. We're going to know, know the new song. We're going to be the praisers. We're going to be the singers. You know why the devil hates you? You took his place. He can't worship God. He can't sing to Him. He can't praise Him. But when He looks at one of you, one God tongue talking apostolics, He starts in on you. I get, sometimes He gets pecking around on me. I say, hey, you ain't nothing but a fool. Anybody that have what you had, and throw it away. You ain't nothing but an idiot. So don't come around talking to me. Yeah, he told me here a while back, he said, Joe, you prayed a lot of people and they got healed. What about you? I said, ain't none of your business. This has to be between me and God. God wants to heal me fine. If he don't, that's still fine. That don't still don't keep him from being a healer. But he's a healer. I was here in Idaho. Felt led, felt led to call this preacher in Arkansas. Didn't know him very well. Uh, so I called him up. How you doing? He said, Brother Moody said, my hands are curled. And I can't straighten them out. And they hurt so bad I can't stand it. There ain't nothing nobody can do. I said, well, brother, uh, I'll just pray for you. I said a simple prayer, and we went on talking. Next time I seen him, he said, that's our God. Eh? Yeah. So you, just because he don't heal me don't mean he ain't going to heal you. I've been healed before, and I hadn't been healed. You know, God knows what's best. He knows what I uh, can endure, what I need. If uh, some people tell me, so why do you go and preach whenever you're hurting and feeling bad? I said, I hurt and feel bad sitting at home. You're going to hurt no matter where you are. You might as well be up trying to preach and do something for God. Amen. That's right. yeah. I've been to Brazil five times five years down with cancer all the time praying for people and God healing them and couldn't, couldn't hardly walk but I went we had good services come home you know it's just according to whether you want to or not Doctor told me here a while back, said, you know, you need to quit preaching around. Said, uh, you need to, you're a sick man. I said, well, Doc, I said, uh, I'm not going to do that. He said, I knew you wouldn't when I asked you. He said, is it him? I said, you got the picture. He said, well, I understand. But anyway, I'm just trying to build a little faith as I go along here tonight. Just 
kind of following the Holy Ghost. So yes, if it leads me down this trail, you just pray I get back over here, you know. That's like Brother Bo asked me one time. He said, can I have your notes? We're driving along. I said, yeah, here. He said, that's a blank sheet of paper. I said, that's my notes. He said, sign it. <laughs> so y'all going to get just what God gives me, or y'all going to be up the creek. Because I, I just have to follow the Spirit. If it don't turn out right, you, I, I think I'm hearing from God. I may not, but I think I am. That's the closest I can get. But y'all going to help me, aren't you? Yes, sir. But when Noah finished that ark, then God put him and his family in the ark. Not till he finished it. So when he got it finished and the rains began to come and uh, as the flood began to take its toll, the old ark rose up on the waters. So many days, or water de de deceased, dry land. Then Noah got out on dry land and took some animals and gave God an offering. Then he planted him a vineyard. Got drunk. Lay naked. Son looked up on him. Cursed him. He was noble when he was building that ark. But when prosperity come along, he got naked. Lay naked. If we ain't careful, we're going to be worshiping our blessings. You need to worship God and thank Him for your blessings. You don't want to worship your blessings. You take years ago, back in the early part of the last century, back in the Depression, when times were rough, that's when the church was the strongest. They had to pray for the crops. They had to pray for the rains. They had to pray for... Uh, a living you didn't have drug stores and doctors and all that you know had them old circuit doctors they come by and whoever the sicket they stayed all night till they got better or died you had about four medicines castor oil, vixab, something else that about it you know so you had to do a lot of praying but they knew how to pray and they knew how to love one another and they knew how to get together and get the mind of God. They knew how to pray down the power. But I'm afraid as a whole, Pentecost has got too prosperous. I'm not talking about it. God's wanting us all to be poor as a whippoorwill. But you know, when you get to all, your money's a buying you this and buying you that and taking you there and taking you here and you ain't even talking to God, uh, you done got you another God. We don't need to be worshiping what God's blessed us with. We need to be thanking him for what he blessed us with. You know, he can take it all away in one minute. I thank God every day of what he gave me. I thank God every day that he got me, give me the strength that I've got. I get up every morning and I say, God, I thank you for another day. This is a day the Lord made. I'm going to enjoy it today. God holds tomorrow. I don't have any control over that, and I ain't going to worry about yesterday because I can't do nothing about that. I'm just going to enjoy my salvation. I'm going to talk to God, and when I'm down, I'm going to pray, and he lifts me up, and I'm going to pray for the joy in the midst of all of my troubles and trials. I still got happiness. I still got joy. You know, I tell you what, the world can't give you that. The psychiatrist can't give you that. The head shrinker can't give you that. But God can give you peace in the middle of the storm. God can give you hope whenever you have no hope. God can touch your mortal body whenever you can't hardly move and give you strength. God can do anything. God majors on impossibility. There's nothing impossible with God. 
built this ark and it never had rain. But he built it according to what, how God wanted it. I remember back in the old, of course we worked, we farmed back then. But I remember we'd get in them old wagons and we'd have camp meetings down in the valley. Brush arbors. We had logs for pews. Logs for altars. Lad and lamps. Mosquitoes and everything else. But you know they was singing and happy coming down out of them hollers and them wagons and women are shouting, oh, I'm going to church. Me and the plowing along and said, boy, I get to go to church tonight. Get up at sun up, sun up, work all day plowing. Come home, time to get in the number three wash tub. <laughs> and that's for everybody. One towel, one washcloth. <laughs> You better hope you wasn't last. <laughs> but somehow we got all cleaned up, got in the wagon, got down to church. There's out in them trees of praying and wasn't no competition. The preachers were saying, let's pray and see who's got it. Directly one of them say, I got it, I got it. Well, you going to preach tonight. Go to 12 and 1 o'clock. Be going home and people are shouting in the wagon get home, go to work the next day. That's why they had the revivals back then. They had to pray. But we're coming to a time, I'm going to tell you, church, and it's not far off. You're going to have to trust God because they're closing in on us. That world hates this, this, this uh, what we got. They just hadn't come out of the chute yet. They're already killing them overseas, the Christians. But wait till they find out this real church here. That devil turns them loose on this. You're the greatest threat that the devil's got. But it says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. God told me a while back I was praying and he said, it's going to be a great falling away right soon. He said, a great one. And he said, the liberals, the uh, carnal, and the ones that go by knowledge, all of that, I'm going to move out. Then I'm going to take people that are hungry that don't maybe know about the gifts and the following the spirit and I'm going to usher them in right. and I'm going to have men that I have prepared it's going to teach them and said that's going to be my church I gave them the tools to perfect the church and they don't use it the fivefold ministry and the gifts right. but said they don't use it but we're going to use it and said you're going to see great exploits and miracles and the church is going out of there in power it's going back like it was and it whenever it was born so i'm going to tell you god's getting the church ready you might as well get ready to trust god you have to trust god down the road for food you'll have to trust him for shelter got to trust him for protection now people don't believe that but they'll all be left behind but we're working on something that's going to stand like a theologian told me here a while back I was preaching at a meeting I ain't gonna call no names and I said you know we don't need nothing but the King James version I said that NIV ain't nothing but new age and uh, American standard and all that well this one professor <laughs> he cornered me you hurt my feelings I said well I didn't mean to I teach out of the NIV. I said, well, it's still truth anyhow. He said, well, there's some things wrong with the King James. I said, not mine. Mine stood the test of time. It got us to where we are today. I think I'll just stay with it. So you just take your NIV and go right on down the road with it. You know, 
You know, I'm old-fashioned now. Y'all that put up with me, y'all may be educated. I'm not. But Brother Pace, I just can't. I don't like them iPads for a Bible. They said, what's wrong with that? I said, well, if you just take and check that thing out, it's got every filthy thing you can muster up on it. Every kind of old pornography and anything you want to touch it with, and you're going to bring it up here and substitute that in this pulpit for this holy Bible. This is the most precious thing in the world. We, we need to reverence this right here. I'm not interested in the iPads and the E-pads and all them other pads. I'm interested in this one right here. This got me to where I am. It's going to carry me on. Thank God for the truth. Thank God that we got something we can hang on to. Glory. Aren't you glad you got a preacher that just preaches it to you straight? Oh, yes, yeah, that's the way you want it. You know, strong food makes you grow. Baby food makes you stay babies. I don't want that baby food some of them putting out. No, I want some good old strong, uh, some good steaks and some good old potatoes and beans. Just pour it on. Preacher won't preach to me. I don't even want to hear him. I come to be preached to. I want a preacher to tell me when I'm wrong. I don't want him telling how right I am. I know I'm not right. I still got things that I need to get right. There ain't none of you perfect either. <laughs> we all got to work on this building. <laughs> We've all got to be busy. But we need to get back to the old paths. That's a good way. Church coming on power and it's going out on power. It said the former house would be more glorious than the uh, ladder. Thank you, brother. I ain't thinking chemo. It kicked in, but he helped me out there. Y'all stay with me, will you? <laughs> I'm feeling the power of the Holy Ghost here tonight. No telling what God will do to get your building ready. <laughs> get your house in order. Tonight you could walk out of here with a victory. You could walk out of here tonight and say, I'm heaven bound. You could walk out of here tonight saying, God has, re has, has, has touched me again. I'm preaching to somebody tonight and you need to get right with God because you hadn't been right in a long time. But I'm trying to tell you tonight how to do it. You just got to make your mind up. I'm going to serve God with all my heart, mind, and soul. I'm through playing church. I'm going to get down to business. I'm going to build this uh, building just like God wants it. I'm going to put in it what God wants in it. And I'm going to take out what God wants out. I'm going to build it according to the divine plan of God. I'm getting it ready to go somewhere. I'm getting it ready to get out of this world. I'm not of this world. I'm just in this world. I'll tell you tonight, we are kings and priests. We are of a royal priesthood. We're not just anybody. We're not somebody behind the tracks. But I'll tell you that God looks on us. We're the apple of his eye. He's the one that chose us for his bride. I'll tell you tonight, you are privileged just to stand in the presence of Almighty God and feel him one more time. There ain't nothing like feeling the power of the Holy Ghost. I'll tell you tonight, if you don't have it, you ought to be getting it. And if you hadn't had it in a long time, you ought to be praying back through. How long has it been since you felt the power of God? How long has it been since you spoke in tongues? How long has it been that the Holy Ghost has just shook you from one end to the other? How long has it been since you had a refreshing? How long has it been since you left church with the victory? Oh, yes. Don't you, aren't you tired coming to church, sitting on the pew, 
and watching everybody else get a blessing and leave here the same way you come when you got a chance at heaven. You're just in 30 feet of heaven or you're in 30 feet of hell. You can choose either one you want. But tonight, God's here. He's got an extended hand. The angels are looking on and the God's ready to uh, one to repent and the angels are getting excited. Why don't we come down to the altar and get what God's got for us tonight? <laughs> oh, I'll tell you tonight, we need to get our house in order. Get it fixed. We're getting ready to go on a trip. And we got a one-way ticket. There ain't no coming back. <laughs> It's stamped by the blood of Jesus Christ uh, and ain't nobody can stop us. Uh, ain't no devil can hold us back. Uh, the world can't. Uh, all the forces, armed forces in the world can't. Whenever God comes and, and we either go by the grave uh, or he comes uh, and we're going out of here and there's nobody can do anything about it. And I want to tell you something tonight. There ain't no rich men in the graveyard. There ain't no politicians in the graveyard. Everybody Everybody's the same in the graveyard. You're naked when you come in and you're naked when you're going out. There's a pair of hands washed you coming in and a pair of hands is washed you going out. So all of your possessions can't help you. It ain't going to do you one bit of good. But what I'm talking to you tonight about, it'll get you out of the grave. It'll let that gravitation turn loose. It'll soar you into the heavens. All oh, tonight, all you got to do is just talk, call on Jesus. He's here tonight. He's ready to get you heaven bound. What are you going to do with it? Walk away from him. Are you going to walk through the blood of Jesus Christ to get to go to hell? I'll tell you how much he wants to keep you from going to hell. He gives man the keys to the kingdom, but he held the door to hell. He wouldn't trust a man with hell. That's how much he wants you to be saved. He come to seek and to save that which was lost. He bought you at Calvary. He paid for you. You're here tonight because he chose for you to be here. You're not here because of who you are. You're not here because somebody invited you. You're here because mercy reached down before judgment and drawed you in the house of God. You may say, well, I don't need nothing. Yes, you do. You need a good renewing of the Holy Ghost, and you need a, you need the Holy Ghost if you don't have it because you're naked without it. All this stuff, gold and all this stuff, ain't going to help you one bit. It says you're miserable, you're poor, you're wretched. Oh, yes, but tonight uh, you could be a millionaire. You could leave here with a pearl of great price. You could be here with a ticket going to get you out of here, and you could have you a hope when you hadn't had any hope. You you can go down tonight and get you a good night's sleep. You can wake up in the morning and speaking in tongues. Oh, I got the Holy Ghost. You'd be the happiest person you've ever been in your life. I'm telling you what, the joy of the Lord is your strength. We need to show me happy people. I'll show you strong people. I tell you, thank God that he didn't just leave us down here walking around and hunting, trying to figure out what to do. He made a plan. He gave us a divine one. He gave us one to get us out of here and get us heaven ready. Yeah. Glory. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you tonight, don't you feel him? Heaven has come down. Hell's going to step aside. <laughs> Oh, we're going to pray heaven down. It's hell. Get out of the way. You devil, you, you can go out the door. But we're not going to allow you in here. You have no part in this church. You have no part in my life. He don't have no part in your life. You are bought, bought by Jesus Christ. He owns you lock, stock, and barrel. You're not of yourselves. You don't own yourself. He owns you. Let's worship him.
Oh, Lord, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad you know him? Aren't you glad you can feel him? <laughs> oh, Lord, I don't ever want to walk in the church and can't feel you. I don't want to think I'm right and I'm not right. <laughs> don't leave me, Lord. <laughs> Lord, I want every time I walk in them doors, I want to feel your presence. I want to know you're with me. I want to know you're interested in me. I got to know each day, God, I got to check in with you. I got to speak in other tongues every day. I've got to feel the power every day. Oh, he gave us power to become the sons of God. You got power. You ain't just sent left, left here all weakling. You ain't left out here with nothing. You got more power than a jet's got. You got more power than any power in the world. Whenever you leave here, the Holy Ghost going to propel you out of here and it's goodbye world. You're going to soar through them clouds. You're going to pass the moon and the stars and you're going into that heavenly place. Oh, yes. What a day that'll be when my Jesus I'll see. Oh, we're going somewhere. We're heaven bound. We're working on a building. We're getting it ready. Nobody can take you out of the palm of his hand. You're talking about safety. You can walk out when you want to, but there ain't a devil. There ain't a man. There ain't a hypocrite. Nobody can take you out of the hand of the master. Glory. Glory. Let the Holy Ghost move here right now, Lord. He call him a hotai. Anda kasahaya. He touch a hotai. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Thank you, Lord, for inviting me to church. Thank you, Lord. I can feed you one more time. Oh, God's pleased with this. God's pleased with you worshiping him. God's pleased with you praising him. Oh, tonight, worship him, praise him, glorify him. He is your creator. He's your God. He's your father. He's your friend. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, sweet Jesus. None like him. None can stand beside him. He stands alone. Oh, what a day. What a day that's going to be. You talking about a family reunion, you wait till we get over yonder. Oh, we're going to sing, we're going to dance, and we're going to shout. We're going to see our loved ones. Most of all, we're going to see that one that went to Calvary, that one that died for our sins. I don't want to barely make it. I want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Oh, heavenly father. Oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> Oh, where could I go but to the Lord? Oh, 
Daniel Van Levald. Oh, Jesus. Oh, where could I go? Where could I go? It's all in him. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Oh, sweet Jesus, Heavenly Father, I glorify you, Lord. I worship you, Heavenly King. There's none like you. There's none can stand beside you. One faith, one God, one baptism. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Oh, ain't you glad you're a child of the King? Oh, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind, I love them ever more. Oh, Heavenly Father. Oh, Heavenly King. Ikolomana Shanda Hanaka Zahata Hoko Shola Mahota. If you, Heavenly Father, yes, Lord. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, just thank he visited us tonight. Just thank he come down. Just thank tonight he walked up and down these aisles. Just thank God tonight he come and give us a visitation that we could feel his presence.